time once again for the Real People Multi Game Solitaire Mega Tournament. A long sleep, it feels like a long sleep, a long rest might be over. Uh, both myself, and I have to take total blame for this actually, but also I will uh, share that blame with Mr. Melky and Cowboy. Uh, we're not paying attention to the encroaching giant that is flush. He seemed totally beat out. And they got distracted. Uh, what were they distracted by? Well, by each other. By, not me, by each other. Well, I guess I was distracted by them as well. But, um, Melky, here's how it happened. Okay. So we were approaching the elimination point. And we still are, okay? There's been no elimination yet. Um, and Cowboy and Melky are well ahead of Flush. Flush is way back there. Cowboy seems to have control of the situation. Um... Melky starts thinking ahead. What's going to happen next? What's going to happen after this? Well, either he or Cowboy, he figures, are going to be next slated for elimination. So he thinks, I'm going to take Cowboy down now, get started, get a jump on it, so that after the elimination, I'm ready. Well, what happened was Cowboy started fighting back and kind of started focusing on that. Wasn't thinking about Flush too much. Flush was conf was fighting Cowboy, but not, not as much as Melky, it didn't seem. No, definitely not. And so those two just kind of got tangled, kind of both figured Flush was a goner, uh, or I figured Flush was a goner, and then Flush snuck ahead. So right now, as we stand currently, um, Cowboy's Phoenicians are two spaces away from the elimination point. Melky's um, English? No, not his Ottomans are three spaces away from the elimination point, and Flush's Portuguese are four spaces away from the elimination point. They're all basically tied in points. Milky's one point behind Flush and Cowboy. So this is a pretty exciting turn. The eliminations, well, I don't know if it's going to happen soon, but it's definitely a neck and neck situation. Flush has still got the high scoring potential, but he's also kind of grabbed some attention with his dominance. And he might be getting some attention from the people up top, from Runt and Giraffe. I don't remember what I... I kind of went through the thought process with them yesterday for what they were going to do this turn. I don't remember what they decided, but um, I know that, you know, he's the... He's not the high scorer by any means, right? Uh, Runt still is very easily, but he's definitely scoring the most every round, and that's going to make everyone else pay a little bit more attention to the person I had assumed wrongly possibly but maybe not it's not over you know we're not at the elimination point yet but assumed was going to be a clear loser we are beginning with star empire and boom there are germans there are runt germans they uh, they appeared in the black forest and they got a free maneuver so they're spreading out cutting cutting down those romans trying to attack those romans i'm going to roll some dice okay so i'm going to try a new dice system just, and I'm, I haven't even thought this out, I just thought of it after I actually rolled these dice. Uh, the first fight here is in the Low Countries. Um, just to see what happens, because I'm not satisfied with things as I've currently done it. It also takes a long time <laughs> to, to roll things, and I'm, I'm quickly running out of time. So how, how we're going to do is we're just going to say... Okay, here are um, Runt's attack dice. Here are giraffes. These are giraffes defense dice. Runt actually didn't roll any defense dice. Um, and here's Runt's kind of neutral dice. So we're just going to tally them up like this. Dun, dun. And, you know, we don't even have to do it in order because it's just going to happen. So those attacks all got through. Um, each of these that doesn't have a matching defense dice gets two dice. And actually I need to take the attack dice out. Okay, so she gets two more and one like that. And then she's going to get six. One, two, three, four, five, six. So basically what I'm doing is for every defense die that matches up with an attack die, um, the person who has the attack die only gets one. Okay, if there's no defense die, then they get two other dice. Now, what about those neutral dice, though? I don't love that. Um... Well, we're gonna we're just gonna go with this this time. I'm gonna use this series of fights to just try different mechanisms, and we'll just you can see what they are and see what you think. So we have eight to six there. That's that's about how it normally ends up. 
Um, there were some cases though. Yeah, there's something I want to change, but I'll do that on the next one. So eight to six, that's like a difference of two. So Run's probably going to take a two, two point card if she can from here. What's she going to do? She's kind of making it so the Romans are not probably going to stick around. So does she even want to bother just trashing, or does she? Can she steal anything? She can't steal anything. Oh, she'll probably want to get rid of the, the units there, right? So she'll get rid of a unit. And then that extra die she's not really going to be able to do anything with. All right, so let's do let's do this one next. Okay, so here we have a 6-3 to three matchup. And we're going to do the same thing, only if... Well, it's not going to come into play this time. But she's got that one. And she has this one. And then... Yeah, that's a one-to-one, -one, right? Huh. So there we have a situation where it's a draw. That's already a different result. I like that. Okay, so that's good. Um, it's a draw there. So then what happens? <laughs> what happens if there's a draw? And they're in Germany, of all places. Um, I guess they do another round, right? Don't they? Don't they? If there's a, dra a draw, someone can try to retreat if they want to, or they can do another round. And I think um, Giraffe is going to retreat. That's the smart move. And then we'll do this next fight here in Denmark. Okay, so here we got a, a bunch of dice here. 16 to 9 is the roll. <laughs> but Giraffe only got one die. We're getting lots of interesting rolls here. A lot more interesting than what I have been getting before I started toying with the system. Um, so we got a bunch of defense dice on each side, uh, so this is going to go. And I think I want to do something where you can use two defense die to just cancel out the attack entirely. That's fun. That's a little more they can do with it. So we're going to do that over here as well. And it's going to be another draw. No, it's not. She gets one through. And... So then she's going to get two after that. All right, so it, it ended up a, a net of two. Now, what I was going to also change is, so anytime there's not a defense die to cancel out the attack, they have to get, a, get rid of two of these neutral die. Now, if they don't have those neutral die, right? Um, oh, and that would be fun, too. If they don't have those neutral die, then they get three dice. So if there's there's extra attacks that go through and there's nothing to defend against it, then three dice go through. So it's going to make for um, a wider range of possible att uh, attack outcomes. I thought about letting the neutral dice also act as attack die if you use two of them, but I don't think I want to do that. Maybe I'll let them be. Op you know, you can you can put them up and roll. Put up two and roll. Nope just to see if you get an attack, and then it would work. Nope. Okay. Okay, so two. She's going to want to use that to get rid of the people there, right? She'll get rid of these two guys. But then this guy has nowhere to go. They have no. Actually, that guy runs away to Sweden. <laughs> That's fun. I just want to highlight the leader that Runt has here for her Germans. It's uh, Martin Luther from Here I Stand fame, and from... History fame. Let's move that out of the way. I just here I stand. There he is. And um, here's a I kind of selected, hand selected Tanner here for Martin Luther. He was actually the first guy I saw, but I thought he really fit. Um, one, his name is kind of like Luther Tanner, and he has a free action escape, which is kind of the reverse of um, Martin Luther's. Here I stand move that he can do in Here I Stand, where he just kind of appears out of nowhere to um, get in the way. Tanner can just disappear out of somewhere to be out of the way. Giraffe starting Zimbabwe. Right here in Zimbabwe, the Zimbabweans are appearing and striking in the very kind of sparse and weakly defended southern. Uh, Horn of Africa. Is this the whole thing, the horn? I don't know. It looks kind of like a horn, right? Um, 
that's a it's a huge differential in dice. So I, I rolled it up and I ran into another issue um, with this kind of new system. So I thought I'd talk about it because we're talking about systems today. Um, so many more attack dice than Runt could do anything to defend. Already she has five dice over Runt's one. Now one change I want to make is that you can't cancel out. So there's always going to be some cost to attack or some potential cost to attack. Uh, by cancel I mean Giraffe can't take one of these and get rid of that. However, you know, if all of these go through, that's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 times 3. That's 27 more victory dice. That's going to be too much. So there's got to be a limit somewhere. Now, the natural limit would be when she's at a dice, that's the limit, right? Um, do we want to do that? No, because we we want there to be a little bit more to it than that. I don't I don't think the the weak guys should just totally be stomped out of existence, right? Just by losing one battle, you shouldn't lose your entire culture, right? Generally, I I like that if you have more people involved, you have more to lose, right? If you have if it's it's a relatively small battle in terms of all of the pharaonic Egyptians. So why would she lose much more than that from it? Whereas, you know, here the Romans got lost quite a bit of territory and several units, so it would make more sense that they would lose more. Hmm. So what's our natural limit? Five times the number of units there? Is that a, a good natural limit? I don't know. i got to think a second. Okay, I think I got it. I think the limit should be the dice that are here, right? So how some dice get go down here and it's the dice in the box and the ones that aren't that have been used. So the ones in the victory pools, they're used. The ones up here, they're unused. Um, so they need to be ones like these that are used. So I think she can use this one. Oh, yeah. And then take all of this. That's a huge difference. That's going to change the game a lot, but let's try it and see how that looks. So that's going to be eight to one, and that might allow some of these like big fat old empires, um, allow them to get torn down a little easier. Especially if you build on these red spaces, which indicate that someone is coming to get you, or someone could appear there. So that'll be one die. And then she has seven more. Wow. And that'll also allow for um, for a stronger start for new empires. This is going to change the game, but I think I might like it. No production this turn. That brings us to trade in progress. Big, big trade in progress right now. The Portuguese, I just looked it up. Since they're in Era 4, they can trade through the water. They're doing a trade with the <laughs> Phoenicians here which Flush would like to lose. Uh, reason why is if he loses the trade, Phoenicians go up two, and that's the cutoff point. So that would mean that this is the last turn. Um, Cowboy traded back, and it's a four to five trade here. So the, the, the red dice are Flush, and the yellow dice are the Phoenicians. So let's see how this goes. This is going to probably affect something. All right, so okay, so we are seeing here that there's a lot of a lot of nothing. Um, so that's gonna get a point over there and a point right there, and that looks like a tie trade, right? Yeah. That's a tie trade. Um, uh, do I let him? Yeah. I don't think he wants to do it, though. He's not going to try for the roll. Okay, so it's a tie trade. They're both going to go up one. And that's it. So we're seeing some more varied results with our die roll mechanism, our new die roll mechanism. So what just happened was um, the Pharaonic Egyptians, they maneuvered because they kind of have to or else they lose three points because of the jihad that Runt put down, put in place here in Italy. Um, so she sent these horse folk down into the jungles here to battle this guy uh, of giraffes. They had a much better um, 
you know, die, die pool than Giraffe's uh, fellow here, but he won. He actually drove them off just because they didn't ro roll any attack dice, and they couldn't use these to make more. Um, I think I decided against doing that. These are just kind of buffer dice. Um, and so it ended up being three to two. Now, what was what was my thought? Some other thought. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So one thing, I uh, one danger of this, this mechanism is it, it, since since you can't cancel out the other person's dice anymore, it's it would be co not very cost efficient to have people like this knight, which costs four bucks, versus this guy, which costs two, right? Because you could just use one die. It would only take one victory die to get rid of it. So I'm trying to think of some sort of strength cost, like maybe tier system. I know, I know. How about if it costs a, a number of dice equal to the cost of the unit? That makes sense. So this guy's infantry, so it costs two. But the problem with that is, you know, it should be, yeah, I guess that works out. That works out. But then you have cases where you have like a tank, right? Where's the tank at? I guess that's cavalry. Yeah, I mean, a tank shouldn't be just as easy to get rid of as a chariot. I'll have to think about that. Um, I could do something about the age in which it's it can be created, but then this this knight should be easier than these guys. I'll have to think about that. The jihad in Italy has put Melky in kind of a difficult position this turn. He really needs to um, he really needed to maneuver with the Russians because they were all stacked up. You see, they've spread out now. He needs to start scoring, um, but he also had to maneuver with the Ottomans or else he'd lose three points. The problem is the cost of double booking, maneuvering with two different empires, is one point. So he kind of had to make a calculation better to get some points with the Russians. Although they are competing with the Ottomans, um, he is going to be able to score on Europe, I think, this turn. Um, then, and to lose the point, then to, then to not do it. Destiny action, we've seen some uh, card play. Cowboy played a card that made it so that uh, Flush did not get to draw as many as he wanted. Right now, he and, and Cowboy are both kind of set up to just try and get as many points as possible. A good way to do that is through Civilize. Um, Civilize can allow you to make artifacts and whatnot. So they both wanted to do Destiny to try and get cards to in order to score. Um, Cowboy made it so Flush got fewer cards, so that could help him out. Um, now it's the civilized action, and Cowboy is about to strike again. Now he has the, the wreath lead, like he has most of the game. So he's going to actually make it so that Flush overslept. So Flush's civilized action is just not going to happen because Flush was sleeping. Sort of a meta card here, and I don't think Flush has a counter card. He doesn't, so that's going to end it for him. Poor Milky, he... He's not able to do a lot because he had to maneuver so much. And now it is going to be Cowboy's turn again. Cowboy wants to beat up some more on Flush and Milky. And I kind of got to decide how he's going to do it. But he drew quite a few um, attack cards, so he's going to do those now. All right, Cowboy had nothing he could score with, but he did some damage that is going to, I think, help him. One, he got rid of all of the Japanese treasury. That's going to make it so they're no longer... Um, scoring on money, they got that's two of their points right there. Um, also, the, his English are the next highest in money. He actually was able to give them some more money, so they're gonna. He's gonna be getting two points on that, unless that that situation changes, which would mean Giraffe would have to do something because she's the last remaining play of this game. If she even has civilized as an action, she doesn't. So he's gonna score on that. Then he also he got rid of the wheat. Um, all the the wheat things he he made a equine fever here, which made the horsemen there get sick, and then he caused a plague to spread um, from Shantung all the way to Manchuria, which got rid of a number of units. The Japanese score a lot, but they are really far behind in progress because they haven't been able to trade with anyone, uh, so they're just kind of back in H two, which makes them more susceptible to disease. So pretty pretty good play by Cowboy. I don't. I don't know if it's going to be enough or not. We'll have to see. Uh, we'll finish up the turn. Actually, I can just keep going. Um, 
It's going to be time to discard some empires. Time to say goodbye. Who are we saying goodbye to? Let's go on down, go on down. First, the, the original English are going away. Um, Melky, you know, doesn't have much left there. Probably wise, though. Maybe the timing's not the best. I'm just going to toss them aside right now. So that means all of these are going to go to the blue faction. So it's kind of like a, a new guard took over the English. And actually, I should probably, rather than discard this card, just move it over here. So uh, Cowboys inherited a fairly strong empire now. Uh, without without the Civil War, they're, they're doing better. He wanted it more. Uh, and then finally, the Romans are going away, which is wise. Um, even without them getting beat up this turn, they were they were starting to shrink, and Giraffe could see it coming. So that's that's one of our older empires going away. Not the oldest. I think the Phoenicians and the Pharaonic Egyptians have been around longer. So that's going to score some money. This is all worth money for Giraffe, and that's going to empty out Europe. Um, actually, mostly just France. Yeah. All right. Let's. I'll I'll do the scoring and come back. And here we have it. So, here's how it's looking. Flush has still scored more than Cowboy this turn. They were tied at the beginning of the turn, if you recall, so he scored two more points. That's actually not bad. Cowboy um, definitely cut down on the Japanese scoring machine by uh, five points, which is decent. Um, Melky and, and Giraffe were the big losers this turn, and I'm worried about Melky. He he was he's focusing too much on being a stick. Um, and he's definitely been beating some people down. Scoring with the Russians, Ottomans aren't doing much. Um, but he does have a new empire coming, so if he can get a good empire going, he's not out of it yet. He, you know, he's kind of in Flush-like position, but we saw Flush come back. Flush came back, but Flush had a lot more time. A lot more time. He had the Japanese. I don't know. Man, that's going to be rough. Uh, giraffe, she's only scoring two points now. She's kind of in the same. Actually, her and Melky were both the ones who discarded empires. Uh, but giraffes, giraffes, then they're both acting like sticks, aren't they? I mean, giraffes just beating that runt, but runts, I don't know. I guess the Zimbabweans aren't doing too bad. Sudanese actually didn't do too bad either. They they had that kind of underdog comeback fight, but not getting a lot of ground in Africa. Jeez. So being a stick seems kind of necessary, otherwise, you know, run, just running away, maybe they should have been a stick sooner. Um, but we have a European stick and an African stick, and neither of them are scoring too well. The European stick is doing better than the African stick, but there's a lot more churning in Europe. Oy. Yeah, definitely tough, definitely tough. We, I mean, we could be seeing an elimination next time, I think, especially since it's in Flush's interest. And it's in kind of Cowboy's interest, too, to make it happen fast. He doesn't want Milky to, to, to sneak up. Definitely an exciting turn. Lots of changes. Lots of changes. Well, not a ton of changes on the map, but definitely in terms of the dynamics. And I like the new system. It needs some, needs some more tooling, but we'll see how it goes next time on the Real People Multi-Game Solitaire Mega Tournament 7x7 seven seven Ages.